Greetings, I'm Linda Pence Gunter with Beyond Nuclear, and this is the update. Of all the arguments against the continued use of nuclear power, the unsolved problem of nuclear waste remains the most compelling and persuasive for most people. Everyone can relate to waste because we all make waste every day of our lives. We are constantly throwing things away. In more recent years, thankfully, more of us have turned to recycling or reusing, but the detritus caused by human wastefulness continues on a monumental scale, as the sad sight of our plastic-filled oceans tragically reminds us. But the waste produced by commercial nuclear reactors is unlike any other. In the name of generating electricity, we have been content to produce a waste so lethal that it remains toxic to human health not only for decades or centuries, but in some cases for millennia. The first cupful of atomic waste was generated in 1942 with the first self-sustaining chain reaction at the Chicago pile. And since that day, we have never come up with a safe management solution for the radioactive waste that fission produces. Yet we keep making more of it. And we continue to ponder how we can just send it away, but to where and to be dumped on whom? Last week, Beyond Nuclear filed suit in federal court to try and block just the latest of these schemes, a proposed consolidated interim storage facility in West Texas. The community there has not consented to take it. The dump would be outdoors, effectively a parking lot of radioactive waste casks. And given no alternative storage option has yet been identified, it risks being not interim at all, but permanent. Of course, the West Texas project is by no means the first attempt to dump the country's commercial high-level radioactive reactor waste on a minority community. The most notorious example is the cancelled but still debated Yucca Mountain Deep Geological Repository in Nevada. Not only did the state government not want it, but digging and burying the waste there violated the 1863 Treaty of Ruby Valley with the Western Shoshone Indian Nation. The treaty recognized Western Shoshone sovereignty at Yucca Mountain, and the Western Shoshone have opposed the proposed radioactive waste dump from the start. Aside from its environmental justice violations, Yucca Mountain was just a terrible choice from a geological standpoint. It's located in a highly volcanic area. The site is actually surrounded by visible cinder cones, and studies have shown that the waste would escape the casks well within the somewhat arbitrary 10,000 year time limit that was set, and seep into groundwater and eventually into drinking water. Is a repository in principle a bad idea? Some would argue not, but finding a site that meets not only the geological standards necessary, already hard enough, but also avoids discrimination against local communities and is housed in a place that has low prospects of political volatility and the challenge becomes orders of magnitude harder. In the past, reactor waste fuel has been reprocessed in the US. This is still done in France and is coming to a close in England. But reprocessing only creates greater volumes of waste, even as it reduces the proportion of hot, that is high level waste. These wastes have to go somewhere, so they are discharged into the air and water. And reprocessing separates out the plutonium, which has left France and England with massive useless plutonium stockpiles, a major proliferation risk. At Beyond Nuclear, we advocate for something called hardened on site storage, which we view not as a solution, but as the least worst option for now. Hardly ideal. We have information about HOS, as it's colloquially called, on our website, beyondnuclear.org, in the fact sheet section. But our energy and regulatory agencies have never even considered HOS. They are bent on moving radioactive waste clear across the country, risking transportation disasters along the way to totally unsatisfactory destinations. That's why it's inexcusable that we continue to generate this lethal waste with absolutely no safe, sound, long-term solution as to what to do with the stuff. When I see a plastic bottle discarded on the ground, I pick it up and I drop it in the nearest recycling bin. But it makes me furious. Whoever discarded it was acting on a small scale the way the nuclear industry does on a massive one. They just threw it away and the plastic bottle, which will never degrade, was now someone else's problem. Radioactive waste, lethal for millennia, is the nuclear industry's problem. But they want someone else to solve it. Someone else, taxpayers, to pay for that solution and someone else, 
communities far from the reactor sites and from those who use the electricity the reactor generated to suffer the health or proliferation risks. That's immoral. And in the case of the West Texas dump, probably illegal. We'll fight that one out in court. But on the bigger stage, we all have to fight to close down nuclear power plants. That first cupful of radioactive waste made in 1942 is still with us. The next one generated needs to be the last. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.